special for us all today. Hamina, glory to God. I, send, I bring my salutations and greetings to you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ as we begin this Sunday our service. We travel to Kampala and uh, we thank God that we are able to be back yesterday. And uh, what a moment for us to be together in the house of God and rejoicing and sharing in the mercies of God and receiving the good things of God, tapping in his glory, tapping in his anointing, tapping in his power. What a beauty and what a, a great joy for us. Hallelujah. And so we want to honor the Lord as we receive the mission of the word. I want you to lift up your Bible and just raise it up as an as expression of your faith as we come to receive the word of God. You definitely know what I'm about to tell you. I love this word. The Holy Ghost inspired me to always make people, com to commit people as we enter the midst of the word, to know that you are really committed to the truth that is found in this book. Praise God. This is the book of all books. So raise it up. I yes, said, this is my Bible. I am what my Bible says that I am. And I have what my Bible says that I have. I can do what my Bible says I can do. My Bible is the word of God. It contains thousands of God's promises. They are all yes, and they are amen. They are freely given to me that I will walk in them and enjoy them. Now by faith, I receive every promise and every covenant written in this book. Say big amen if you believe that. God bless you. Now greet each other as we go to the ministry of the word. Just at least three people with a beautiful smile on your face. Greet them as if you're happy. You know, we are in the house of God. One family, one baptism, one Lord. Amen. We are the house of God. We are the temple of God. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so we release that holy holy communion the, the bible calls it konania the holy fellowship of the brethren when the brotherhood come together is called kenonia a holy communion a holy fellowship of them whom God has washed by his precious blood and in such a, a fellowship the Lord commands a blessing so you can be sure as we come today, the Lord bestows, he commands a blessing. By just coming together, there is a commanded blessing that you partake. Every time you go to meet with brethren in prayer, in fellowship, there is always a blessing the Lord will command. There is an anointing that God will release. So every time brethren come together, there is a commanding of a blessing. And the Lord says he commands a blessing. He bestows a blessing. So I encourage you to understand the simple basics that govern our fellowship as Christians and how we can continue growing in the knowledge of God, growing in the anointing, growing in the presence of God. And, uh, you know, not only just coming to hear the word, but that beautiful fellowship with one another. The Lord is pleased. As he says, like, uh, uh, the Lord is pleased when the brethren come together. It gives him pleasure. He receives a pleasure in this because this is his presence. This is his dwelling place. This is a house of God. We, we make a house of God when we dwell together. We become a house of God, a dwelling place, a heaven of God. And, and, and the Lord... Uh, is pleased and uh, uh, when he's in our midst uh, definitely we enjoy his blessing and his presence and the Bible says if God is on our side who could be against us praise God now we, 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 we have been learning very tremendous truth and very glorious things that could dramatically and fundamentally shift your life and change you um, we have been uh, uh, studying 
uh, we have been studying on deep prophetic revelations and which is again extensive you know subject that touches brings other truth brings other truth and i've told you the the revelation of god on any subject is always progressive the deeper you go the more revelation the deeper you go more revelation you'll never come to the end because the spirit of god is an eternal spirit and so you enter into the deep eternities of god and more new things and more new truth get revealed to us and so that's the joy uh, of uh, you know uh, following the style I use and most of you have been used to this church you realize that uh, my teaching is best my style of teaching is best on series I love to dwell on series to go deeper by the time we come out from one one subject to another you are already rooted grounded and uh, I could be bringing a new something every day and you get excited but you not be grounded so I try to avoid you being shallow. I want your roots to go deeper. Yesterday we were returning from Kampala and Jacob was driving and he was just says, Daddy, thank you so much. You will never know how you've changed my life. And for me, my turning point, my game changer was you are teaching on glory. I never can never be the same again in this life. Something happened. He met a rev something opened up his heart. And, and he knows it. And you see, I tell people, once you hit a certain place of breakthrough, you are able to know. When a revelation becomes real in your spirit, you know that if your eye open to see, you know that I have seen. You see, that's the truth of seeing. You get. If you see, you see. Nobody can tell you that you didn't see. So the same thing with the revelation. Once your mind open to the truth, you know. And you will never again be blind in that what you have seen. So um, that's the power of us understanding. So we are looking at the uh, deep prophetic revelations. We started last time talking about accessing the deep things of God. So quickly, uh, we move again. Go with me. I hope somebody on the projector is clear already. Uh, we are going on First Corinthians chapter number 2. Uh, we are looking at the deep things of God. And why I, I, I longed for something back, I remember last year I desired to begin touching on the deep things of God, but I feel it was not the right timing. I taught um, the lunch hour a few days, but I felt like we were not in the right moment. But coming into the prophetic, accessing the deep prophetic things, prophetic revelation, this is very good for us. Um, okay, so let's read through so that your faith may not be based on man's wisdom but on God's power. Uh, go to the next verse. Uh, however, among the mature we do speak wisdom but not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. And that's very, very important because when you begin to understand about wisdom, you see there are three dimensions of wisdom or maybe even four dimensions of wisdom, the wisdom of God, the wisdom of this age, of this world, you know, and the wisdom of this age, the current generation, the what we call the dot-com generation, the dot-com, you know, the, the, the technology that has come up. Uh, and, and then there is a wisdom of, of, of the devil, demonic wisdom, but also there is a wisdom of God which we are concerned here. But now you find so many people are lost pursuing wisdom of this age and wisdom of this world. Now he's saying here, we don't spend our time to speak or to teach men about the wisdom of this age, nor the wisdom of, the, of this world. Because the wisdom of this world or the wisdom of this age will come to nothing. It will be eroded. It will come to nothing. You perish with the, with the wisdom of this, of this age, of this world, even if you become so wise in the knowledge, of, in the standard of worldliness, in the standard of worldly wisdom, in the standard of worldly uh, knowledge, you still perish. It comes to nothing. Your life, your soul perishes. That wisdom can't save you. That wisdom does not teach you to fear God. That wisdom actually alienates or separates you from God. And that's all we don't to the, to the mature who are growing in the spirit, who are growing in faith, who are growing in revelation, in righteousness, we teach them this wisdom of God, which is not based on carnal uh, methods of men, but which is based on the truth of God's word. 
Okay, go to verse 7. Okay. Uh, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Uh, we speak in, in a mystery the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. You know, this wisdom was ordained, uh, ordained for our glory. And he says we speak this wisdom in a mystery. We, we speak it in a mystery. A mystery is a hidden thing, a secret that most people are not known. So we are blessed that we can unpack things that most of land men in this earth don't know. That you can come here, you are more wiser than the wisest men of this earth. Because they can never understand these things. Because the wisdom that we speak, we speak it in a mystery. We speak in a hidden way. We unpack the hidden things, the hidden secrets of God. We reveal the things that the land men of this age don't know. Those businessmen, these politicians, these scientists of this age, they have no idea about this. I tell you the truth. They are just blinded completely to what has been made known to you. What a privilege. And when you think about this, you see the honor that God has blessed us to unveil us to these mysteries and this truth, uh, which have been completely hidden to the land men. You sit with a man in a higher position, you see his level of lostness. I've been privileged of these days because of the cases we have to interact with the people of, in great offices. And when I exchange, I can feel their level where they are talking with me. It's an absurd state. It's an absurd state. And sometimes I'm increasing my authority. Because when you stand in righteousness, you can speak and challenge a man. I was challenging somebody. I said, you guys, you are holding the offices which are supposed to serve us with equity and justice. It's unfortunate that you use your office to abuse justice, which you are supposed to deliver to us. And I'm talking to the man, and he says, I'm hearing you, Bishop, and, I'm, and, and I, feel him, I'm, I feel I'm holding him to his horns. I feel I'm getting him because I'm bold. And my boldness comes from the truth that has set me free. You know, you cannot be bold when you are guilty. You know that? But if you stand in the truth, you'll never suffer guilty. And when the guilt is, is off you, you are as bold as a lion. The righteous shall be as bold as a lion. But any unrighteous acts or any ungodly acts that you involve yourself in robs your boldness. You cannot be bold. If you see a person that is a thief, he fears to look direct in, your, in the face of people. He'll be looking down. He can't have boldness. Something goes wrong even in your own eyes. You've, you, 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 you suffer shame even when nobody has told you. But you yourself, you are condemned deeply in your own heart. So you lack a certain level of boldness just because... Um, that, that, that there is a guilty in your heart. But when you walk in the truth, in the righteousness of God, there is a dimension of boldness and courage. That's why people stand to oppose wickedness because they are rooted. Any truth that you are built in or grounded in, you have the moral capacity and the power to, you know, uh, to, to push it. But if you lack a certain uh, uh, truth, if you're not grounded in any truth, you cannot become, you, no, no, you, can, you, cannot, you, you cannot advance it, you cannot defend it, because you are guilty and you are shy. So that's why we find it's very important that we can continue to plug in in the things of God. So we speak to the, the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God has been ordained. The, the, Jesus Christ is the hidden wisdom of God. But not only Jesus Christ is he hidden, but even other revelations and other truth in God's word have been hidden. Uh, you see, if you go outside on the streets of Kavala or anywhere, and you talk about Jesus as the son of God, people can, can't comprehend. People don't know Jesus, and they can't know him because he is hidden from them. And even us who love Jesus, to God be the glory who has revealed Christ to us by his own grace. I never forget a day when this mystery was made known to my life. 
and how I think how many years I groped like a man groping in darkness with a lot of uncertainties and fear. You know, life had lost a meaning. I, li I remember, and most of you are here, maybe you, it could have been the same with you, but for me I remember feeling a lot of uncertainness, uh, un uncertainty about my own destiny not knowing what my future would look like and fearing everything fearing the unknown fearing the unclear fearing not even knowing what you are fearing fearing everything whether you're gonna make it whether you, if, if you're going to to be successful even when you are studying what if you fail so you are gripped with a fear on everything if i get married married suppose is not a right woman everything strikes with a fear in your heart Many people are living lives like that. Glory to God that we live a life by faith, not by fear. Give Jesus a clap of praise. And that's the difference we have. That we have a faith <laughs> that gives us a hope in God. And the Bible says you have a hope which can never disappoint because the love of God is shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Spirit whom God has freely given. Because there is a witness of the Holy Spirit in our hearts that we are truly sons of God that we are redeemed from the curse of the law that we are washed in the blood of the Lord that we are sanctified that we are consecrated unto the Lord that we are children of God that we are only in a transition moving somewhere to our eternal home praise God we have assurance we have a hope which can never disappoint us that even when you think about death you don't even are not intimidated by death the way it intimidates the people outside there. <laughs> uh, I remember some, uh, somebody said to me, uh, Bishop, somebody has told me, please you back off from that case because you know, you're going to die. The people, those guys are dangerous. They will kill you. Listen, I said, I'm not going to love my life so much to trust it in my own hands. That's what I answered. I will not love my life too much to trust my life, this life, which is not mine again, which is not mine anymore, and I trust it to myself to be safe. No. Are you understand what I mean? What men don't realize that some of us already died to that life. We no longer own this life. So you don't intimidate a person of this dimension. You see, because deep down is a witness, it's no longer I that is living this life. If truly that is true in your spirit, then you cannot protect yourself. Then you cannot protect you then you can realize that there is only another invisible power that can keep your life and protect you to the very end. Are you hearing me? And that's the truth. It's a truth which you don't want to admit. But that's the truth. And I thank God. And that's when I realized, I said, I think we are dead men. Because if I cannot be threatened and intimidated, and I told this man, please, I will not love my life so much to protect myself because I know if I try to fear death to come to me through that direction, it could as well come from another direction. But when it comes from another direction, not in the faith direction that God has ordained for me, then I have lost everything. You understand? Then I have not gained nothing. And so I encourage us to get rooted in the knowledge of God, but this being rooted in the knowledge of God comes through understanding or enlightenment, catching revelation on the truth of God's word. So once the truth is enlightened to your spirit, nobody can, can sway you from that. That becomes your truth. And you know the truth and the truth has set you free. So you are more stronger once you, are, you, have, you walk by revelation to the deep uh, things of God. Take me back to uh, Corinthians. So I encourage you to allow your spirit to plug into dimensions. And remember when we started talking about glory, we've been talking about those deeper levels. Deeper levels. If God is really going to do something special in your generation and in your destiny, you must go beyond the shallow dimension, shallow level, a certain level, even in faith, even in wisdom, even in glory, even in understanding. There's a certain depth 
that you must go into for you to start accessing certain inheritances or certain rights for you or certain privileges or certain advantages that God has prepared for your life. Your life is actually highly favored of God and blessed by God, but you must receive this blessedness. You must tap into that level of his blessedness that it becomes a reality for you. Now it says, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. You see, there is a certain depth that you must plug in for you to experience a certain level of glory. Now, the deeper you go in revelation and knowledge of the mysteries of God, the greater glory that you command upon your life. So, the level of glory that you command is according to the level of revelation of the things of the spirit, the deep things of God that you begin to tap into. Are you hearing me? So God wants you to have a higher degree of his glory. But that dimension, that higher degree of his glory that you walk in, the glory that is radiating in you, the glory that is manifested in your life, the is it dependent on the discoveries or the revelation of the things of God that will be revealed to you. The deeper things get revealed, the increase in the level of glory that you walk in. The increase in the level of dimension. These things were ordained before the ages for our glory. But why we cannot experience this higher level of glory? Because certain truths are still hidden from us. And that's why we come to undig deep things for us or for you. Or to unveil things that have been veiled away from us. So we can see what is, we can see into that realm, higher realm, access, capture, tap into, receive, and, and possess ourselves. That's why we are talking about accessing the deep things of God. So you begin to see your life is radically changing. And, and your ability is growing, your capacity is enlarging, your influence growing, your faith level growing, your wisdom increasing, your creative powers growing, your innovative ability is growing. I told the other time when I passed at Timbara and uh, process said, thank you for teaching. Your labor papa is not in vain. At least, he says, your son is talking about the husband. Your, your son has tapped into this level. Because he's a, he's a professor and he, he has majored into research work. You know, doctors go and specialize in different areas. Now, he, he, he has specialized into studying, you know, making research in plants, in the soil, and the rest. And, and through these teachings and through the conversation that we do, and I, I kept on feeling there is a certain level of innovations as Christians need to tap in. And he began to see that if you allow the Holy Spirit in any field you are operating to take you deeper in that circle, he'll take you deeper. Because all wisdom is from him. And his wisdom is infinite. You know, it is above what only the teachers have taught us. And the people in this world can only operate at a level of education they attain, maybe from the parents or maybe from the universities of certain levels of education. And that is the end. But blessed be you, and blessed are you, praise God, that these things of God, these deep things of God are freely given to you. Oh, come on, give Jesus a clap of praise. <laughs> so he says he has brought a big blessing to the university. And of course, that is what I should expect even you. Any sphere where God has sent you, you should bring a blessing there. You remember the story of, uh, the story of, of Jacob? He was employed by Laban. Did he leave Laban's enterprise the same? Now I'm asking you, did you think Laban stayed the same? No. The man started discovering things on how to, you know, to, to, to produce, you know, uh, spotted goats and sheep. By revelation, the Spirit of God speak to him, get these kind of branches and 
you know, uh, peel them and then uh, put them down into the bath where the, the cows will come to and the goats will come to, to drink water. And he did it by revelation. And the Bible says, as they looked at those peeled branches of almond trees that were put in, they all conceived, spotted goats and sheep. And the man's flock multiplied. So his increase in wealthy and multiplication of his flock was a result of tapping into a certain deep knowledge and deep revelation. Now, if you are a, a veterinary doctor, like my friend here, you see, what can you do? There is much more unexploited potential in your brain. But the Holy Spirit can enlighten you so much to see what your teachers did not know. And that's why we want the church to be on the forefront of innovations. We should be. Because we are, have a sense of the Holy Spirit. We, have an, we, have, we act beyond the five natural senses. We are not limited to only five natural senses of men. We have the Holy Spirit revealing to us deep things of God hidden things, secrets of God. If we start to tap into that in our day-to-day -day operations, we'll truly create influence that has never been there. And each one of you, you need to see the field God has sent you to see how you be more creative and you be more innovative. I remember I said the process, we are conversing, I said, you mean it's going to become like uh, this uh, guy who discovered COVID-19 during COVID time because he was just a professor at Timbera University. Of course, now he became a great man. He even is no longer, you know, uh, a professor at Timbera University because he tapped into dimension and money came in, okay? Just because he got a certain plant and, he, you know, processed it put in little boxes, people started buying each one box at 50,000 and even more. Do you think he became the same again? No, I'm asking you. Do you think his level is the same? Before longer we got to know the, the president was calling him and he was shocked to receive the first telephone call from the president of the Republic of Uganda. Your fame will go into spheres that you never ever imagined because you are doing something different and you are doing something unique. Your career and profession ought to attract favors because you are doing it in a different way. Not other people did it. And it is possible. I can tell you the truth because there is more ways through which the Holy Spirit can give you wisdom. The Holy Spirit wisdom is not limited in one sphere which people have known to do it. In every, even if it is in administration, because me, I told me I worked with the hot loaf and I did a lot of discoveries, uh, used the flowers which other people could not use, made up my name, got my promotion, created a, a testimony until today. I succeeded to do that because I learned to pray when I'm going to work. I learned to ask the Holy Spirit when we are going for meetings. I didn't simply just prepare, put on a tie and go to sit in a meeting. No. Sometimes I didn't know what they're going to discuss and I said, give me what to say in that meeting. Let me not even get worried and be anxious of what to say. Yes. We were in the vetting exercise for the elders and I went for tea. I remember telling this story at the break tea and one of the elders says, I've been enjoying hearing wisdom coming from you. As I was asking questions to some great men of God, I could hear, listen, and bring something which would open space to even all of us who are in that place. And then the guy says, why can't you also plan to become a general overseer one of these times? I said, no, that is not, you know. And I said, you are not the first one. Even when I was at the 
southwest region, which is true here. Pastor Isaac is one of our electoral commission in the NAFBAC. He says, you know, Bishop, you have a potential to become a general overseer. Why should we only be having general overseers from, from Kampala, from the central? We also need general overseers because you have the potential, you have what it takes. But how do a man say you have what it takes when they hear you? You know your words reveal your capacities. You know when you speak, people will gauge you where you are. Whether you are productive or fruitful or unfruitful. Are you hearing me? So that is what, what is in you will come out from the words that you speak. And that's why I'm proud of this church again. Every time I keep telling my people, saying, you, we, we elevate you. We, we just simply finished the interviews for the CDC. But I can tell you, all the faith people that came from here were at the topmost, all of them. And you could think, us who are here, I thank God that we even had a part of our team from Barara, from Isinjuro, were not part of here. At the end of the day, he, uh, he was there, but all of us, it's like we agreed in the rating, and all our people rank. The first five of them, they come up there, other people follow. And I was talking to, to Joel, what is this? He says, of course, you, your people keep hearing the things you are teaching. So when we are here, you do not realize that you are becoming wiser than you came. You do not realize that you are tapping into a certain dimension of revelations, wisdom, and understanding. The influence is coming upon you before you get to know. You get the point. But when people take you somewhere, they realize. That's why from longer we knew people, and I've said that to you, people get people from church here. When they are not even ministers, you can sit here and you never have a chance to teach on this pulpit. And when you go there, you become a powerful preacher somewhere. Our people become pastors when nobody knows them in this church here. Why? Because you've sat here under the anointing, under deep teachings that unlock your own capacities. When you go to somewhere, people have not had such a deeper revelations and teaching, you outshine them. And that's the secret, and that's the mystery. And that's why we keep telling you, keep learning. And that's why I keep saying, get your pen, write down things, be serious. Because this is investing into you, not only just for a Sunday service at Lift Up Jesus, but we are investing into you. And you are receiving investment in the knowledge that you cannot find almost anywhere. You get the point. So four years, six, six years, you're going to be in another level. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, if you meet most of my sons that sat here for years, wherever they are, they are shining. And they are powerful people, and that's the reason. Because they come here and get taught. They come here and get exposed to the deeper things of God. Come on, just keep me going on that scripture. So we are looking at the unveiling, tapping into a certain level. If you are a veterinary doctor, try to see how your profession and career can be more influenced with the wisdom of God. You are a doctor, how you can excel in, as, in your profession as a doctor. You are a manager, you are an administrator, how you can be more creative in ideas that can influence your organization, that can influence you. You get the point. I keep challenging the team we are working with. The other day, I was challenging the headmaster is there. I keep challenging all these heads of different institutions and programs. I said, please, if we get an opportunity and we entrust you with a certain project here, I should expect you to think. I should expect you to open spaces. And that is it. Let me tell you, there is no... There is no any organization which will go beyond their leaders. Their greatness, their success is dependent on the leader on it. So if we have been given leadership capacity, try to see how do I maneuver to grow this. Don't even take yourself to become an employee. Just own the thing. Go and ask God to give you wisdom to take it to another level. I'm telling you the truth. 
Before long, you will discover growth has come. Before long, you discover you are making connections. Before long, you discover you are praying. Maybe some of you even don't pray. I'm, I'm made to wonder. Because when you pray and ask God, he will grant you wisdom. Tell God, how do I take this company? How do I take this project to another level? When I came from Kampala to, to work with Hotel of I, I came with only six workers. And I decided to, to, to create from nothing an empire that made people great and excel. You see, there is more. Maybe some of you guys don't go deep. Maybe you don't own places that have been given to you. Maybe you don't pray deeply because God will give you wisdom. He, do you know God answers prayer? So now do you pray for what has been entrusted with you? Now if you pray what has been entrusted, what kind of prayers do you pray? How do you ask God in that space to show and to manifest his glory through you? Because you are the person if God's power that you represent, God's glory that you represent, if it is ever to be manifested, it won't be manifested in this free space. It can only shine through you. God's wisdom, God's power, abilities can only be manifest through you. So once you are in that space, you have a responsibility to show forth the power of God and to show forth the glory of God. Amen? Through the works mighty deeds through signs and through wonders through excellency in wisdom wisdom of speech and wisdom of works in different different things that you do so i really want to challenge you to narrow it take it beyond being a good message but how does this work in my space okay i am a headmaster i am a doctor i am a medical uh, worker i am you know a manager I am an accountant how do I open new spaces how do I bring progress how do I bring now <laughs> now the Bible says of course you know very well in the scriptures people that were ordinary people but they had a the fear of God in them people like uh, like Joseph and he gets into Potiphar's place and the man says it has come to my realization since you came everything God is with you God has blessed me since I employed him. That happened with Joseph. True? It happened with Jacob. The man says, it, it has come to my realization since I employed you. My business has grown. My cows are multiplying. Now, what is the secret of Joseph? What is the secret of Laban? That they invoke God's wisdom into their career, into their daily operations. They don't go there to, to struggle like other people. They have a covering about them. They, have, they, they tap into the wisdom of God and bring that into daily operations. And it is sin. This is, let's not make our God cheap. Are you hearing me? Let him shine out wherever you stand. Let his glory be revealed through you. Don't allow to hide God's glory and even your own glory. When you manifest God's glory, you think your glory will be hidden? Okay. Even your own glory will shine in the dimension that you make God's glory manifest. So you, you don't make God cheap. Make him great through your works, through your excellency, through your performances. Something should be seen differently. That when they look at you, they say there is something different on this woman. Even you ladies in the family. Even us fathers and heads of families. Let's do something that make the people to see around us that there is something different and unique on our lives. And that is the beauty and the glory and the splendor and the wisdom and the power and abilities and capacities of God. So I pray even today after you go out of this service, you'll have a challenge and a provocation in your spirit to make God's glory shine through you and reveal his power and his mighty. In your words that you speak, in your actions of faith, let your beauty and your glory be seen. You look around from all the scriptures, right from Abraham. Does he act the same other people? No. There's something different. On Abraham, he brings a blessing. He brings great riches and wealth on a nation. The same thing to all these fathers of faith. Abraham, Isaac. Isaac, the Bible says, and he saws in the land that was of drought. 
and he reaped a hundredfold increase in the same year in a drought spell dry spell but he's able to make a harvest out of a dead ground are you hearing what we are saying now what makes it you know <laughs> what makes isaac to sow in the land and reap a hundredfold blessing when other people die in a time of great dry spell and famine so i pray that you're gonna challenge your life and be able uh, just a few minutes to close just take me back at the scripture but those of you take that scripture around and uh, and challenge yourself if isaac can do this the, the ground is dead it is all a dry drought and spell but i make fruitful i make it productive god increases me what is different with you it happens with joseph what must happen in your time i don't know what career you are doing i don't know which space you are there even those of you are watching over me here on the live telecast live stream uh, uh, whichever platform you are watching us i don't know what you are involved in but one thing i know god can make you more fruitful and more productive if you receive his wisdom and the spirit of excellency be in you glory to god okay go to the next verse eight which none of the rulers of this age knew for had they known they would not have crucified the lord of glory of course if they knew that jesus was the lord of glory was a hidden mystery they would have never crucified they could have known but they this was hidden christ was hidden from them and they killed him they crucified him and they thought they were doing good to kill one who had come to bring a new religion but they were killing the lord of glory and the king of glory and they could never they cannot destroy the glory of God and them walk in that glory. For you are glory to increase, it must be making space for the glory of God to shine. As his glory is revealed through you, your own glory, your own life will continue to shine. You remember the story of, of Moses? He entered on Mount Sinai and was there 40 days and 40 nights. And as he made sure God's glory descended the entire from the entire heavens, his own skin began to radiate because he was rubbing in God's glory. That's the beauty of God's glory. That's the beauty of God's power. That if it flows out of you, you are a partake of it. That if his anointing flows through you, that it influences you. You become a, a partake of the first fruit of God's blessing. So whatever manifestation of God that you make to happen through you, you'll become a partaker. You'll harvest, you'll reap from it. So you lose nothing actually to desire to manifest God's power and to desire to manifest God because whatever you make to happen for God, it will happen for you. Are you hearing me? You bless God, God will bless you. You honor God, God will honor you. You love God, God will love you. So you partake whatever you do unto the Lord. Uh, which none of the rulers of this age knew for okay go to verse 9 and that's where we'll close but as it's written eye has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of any man the things which god has prepared for those who love him let us read it again eye has not seen nor ear has heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for those who love him the eye has not seen so there are here three things the eye the ear and the heart the eye to see things you see whatever things you see will influence you your level of faith and will influence your disciplines we are talking about my plan to speak about the gates eyes become the gate to your soul ears become the gate to your soul and so those things you must guard jealously and what you train and discipline your eyes to to see will either make you great or make you small. And that's why you must be very careful. Time comes and you have to make certain tough and painful decisions for, for the sake of making sure that you, you avoid to, to pollute and to defile your, your soul and yourself because your eyes become the gate. If you're going to see the deep things of God, you see them with your spiritual eyes. But also if you're going to see bad things that will bring you down, steal your faith, steal your beauty and joy and confidence and hope, you will see them with your spiritual eyes. It is either to 
godliness or to evil. What, what you see can be interpreted in two areas. For God or for evil. So what do you, how do you determine your eyes to stay seeing what is perfect and what is complete and what is godly and what is righteous? By avoiding your eyes. The eyes of the spirit to see what contradicts to the will of God. You cannot keep your eyes on what is dark and you have great light. You cannot keep your eyes on what is evil and then you become an advocate of righteousness. Soon you will join the wagon of the thing that you see and those who do them. That's why even good people get corrupted. That's why the Bible warns us to avoid company of bad people because it corrupts good morals. So, ears hear. That's why the Bible says, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and by hearing by the word of God. So if you keep hearing words of men and keep hearing negative words, it will sail your faith, it will dilute your faith, it will, it will rob you of your great faith. So sometimes certain conversation, you're going to be intentional and block them away. Because the more you hear, it will determine the level where you function and operate. A bad report. <laughs> I don't want to go there, but you remember the children of Israel. Ten spies came with a very bad report and the entire congregation broke down and wept. And the Bible says their heart was not in them. They were all left hopeless because of what they had. My time is gone. I can't go beyond this. Stand up on your feet. And we shall continue in the coming service. Praise the Lord. Our service has changed and so uh, we cannot, you cannot afford to, if we want to gain any little minute, we must continue to make sure we save every time. Our first service has to end at 10 and uh, the second service cannot go beyond two and the third service cannot go beyond four. So uh, make sure that everything we do within those, enjoy. If you're interested to go, you are free to go. If you want to stay and get more teaching in the coming service, it's up to you. But we pray that God bless you and continue to use your life. Get your tithes and offering. Uh, as you bring your traders and offering, I want you to know that uh, 25th February we are having launch of Kampara Lift Up Jesus Church. And those of you who are going to be part of the Kampara launch, we ask you to uh, make your contribution and also to look for your transportation. We believe it's a time for us to go to Kampala in a big way and launch Kampara Lift Up Jesus Church. We want to go in a big way, and we want you to yourself. Thank you. God bless you. Get your tithes, get your tithe in an envelope, and get your offering. And let's believe God.